Mikey. Mikey, what would you say was the highlight of your cricketing career? Oh, that's 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 a hard one to say. Um, but to tell you the truth, I I, I did not. Uh, I played well in that 1970 series against New Zealand. In all the games, I played extremely well. Like I taught to myself, and others told me so. Um, but strange enough, the highlight I thought was for the combined islands in that 1975 series. Um, in each game we played, I told you about the body, this match already. Uh, we played against Jamaica in Antigua at the recreation ground. And the last pair was at the wicket, fighting to get first in his lead off Jamaica. Jamaica had some good players, Maurice Foster, um, Michael Holding, you know, some of the good players, top players. And it was Hugo, the last batsman. Hugo is an Antigua and he bowls left arm next to him. Uh, Hugo and I are still very close, very close. He caught, as soon as he heard the eruption, he called me to see how we were doing and so on. That's how close we are, um, he and Andy. Um, so, Hugh and I had to be fighting top because we have to make some runs. Last pair in the wicket and playing against the top team. And we stood it out, you know, and guided you along and, and we got first innings. So that put us on the way. The same thing happened in the Tantimore match in Trinidad. The last pair of the wicket, Hugo and I. And we had to fight it out. We had to fight it out. And I was guiding uh, you along. Hugh was the last over. The last ball, we needed three runs to win the match. But Hugh was hitting across the line the first couple of balls. So I, I went up to him and said, Hugh, you're hitting across the line. Don't forget, it was Jumadi in rapid, Jumadi in the left arm, leg spin of bowling. I say he's bowling a leg spin, which is moving away from you. So you have to fit with the turn. And he got it, he got it back onto it. And we, we, we got, we got, we needed two runs, I think it was. And the first one was, was, was comfortable. The second one was very tight, very, very tight. I had to dive in to make my ground. Um, the ball came in, I dived, I shot past the, the, the stumps. The Jumadim got the ball, broke the stumps, appealed, not out. And that was the end of the match. Now, Hopefully you're a tall guy. <laughs> yeah, and I had the reaches. And everybody was saying, well, most of the ex so-called experts were saying, but he should have turned back and make another run to get himself run out. I said, what nonsense is that? The laws of cricket said, once the ball is finally lodged, it's, it's the last ball of the match, it was finally lodged in the hand of the, the, the person at the, at the, at the, uh, non, the, the non-striker's end. He broke the stumps. The ball is dead. The match is ended. What I have to get myself up from diving to run back and get the thing. So I thought that 75 series, when you put it all together, with all the pressures, with all the, the achievements, I thought that was the highlight of, of my career. I would have loved to have, have played in a test match and, and, and made a hundred and, 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 and taken uh, five, six wickets. And I, I said clearly, well, that was the highlight. But unfortunately, <laughs> it, it was in our own regional competition in the combined islands. And uh, deeper than that, I, I, I felt proud that I, I was leading, leading a team that comprised people like Andy and, and Viv and, and Irving and Norbert and Grayson and, and Rocket Sebastian, some of the top players in the in the smaller islands. And out of that, out of that team emerged some of the best players in West Indies cricket, Jim Allen, you know. Uh, and, and that to me, that to me is one of the highlights of my cricket career. Mikey, as you say that, I see some Vincy noses swelling there right now. <laughs> My people join hand in hand now, put your differences aside. Get your hearts and souls together, we got to build this nation with pride. Walk in harmony with good leaders, never elect no one here to rule. Then we can feel at home, my good comrades, our people must not be election tools. So in this moment of history, Tell it in every community, our nation is born, colonialism is gone.
Now this is a time of national freedom, so share a love with someone in 27 ton. Of October, our nation is born. One history, one SSC, one destiny for all the way. Vibrating Sticks. Mikey, you've chose some of our unique and iconic artists for your program. You have Porsa, you have Vibrating Sticks, you have, of course, Beckett. What is it about these artists that put them in your, your personal Calypsonian bouquet? Well, because they have fantastic talent in the first case, and they utilize that talent uh, to the best of their ability and in the interest of their country. Each of these Calypsonians who we have featured uh, before have, 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 have put St. Vincent on the map. This last one by Skakes, uh, it reminded me so much, and, and a lot of them, uh, I, 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 as I reflect, a lot of I chose them because they, they had some meaning to me and to the combined islands uh, because of our, our object playing cricket. Um, Skakes spoke of, of the colonial past. Well, we suffered from that. We suffered from that because the principle of, of, of our masters and, and, and the colonial uh, slaves, as it were, uh, not them going back to slavery, uh, was that, hey, they wanted to control your life. Here you are, a, a, a bunch of, a, a group of young, talented cricketers, just because they are from the smaller islands, you're not paying them the kind of attention that you ought to. That Calypso highlighted all that. And, 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 and we stuck it out. We stuck it out until we began to win. And we eventually won. They split us. And what I should related to you earlier was that after 75, they split the combined islands into leewards and windwards. In effect, they weakened the team. Divide the and conquer. Divide on ah, precisely. The, the rationale was that you'll be exposing more talent. But you could expose the same amount of talent if you stick together, if you're successful. Those successful cricketers can go into their territories and develop younger players and so forth and so forth. Indeed. So they, they are yet to convince me about that separation. Uh, even now, even now, the windwards and the leewards are suffering. They have not been long once the, the leewards won the championship because they had a fantastic team, but that didn't last long. You needed continuity, and you couldn't get the continuity by splitting the the, the, the islands at all into winners and leewards. I was totally against that split. Of course, you brought in more people, but I would rather have quality cricketers than to have cricketers rather than a diluted yeah, right, that team. Is, that's the, Understood. Um, Mikey, you also went on after your actual playing career to go into the executive aspect of cricket as a selector, as a, a, an administrator, among other things. What do you think are the primary responsibilities of captains, of administrators, of selectors? And I'm not talking necessarily about what is set out for you in a job description in black and white. I'm going back to say perhaps your days in 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 Trumaka with Mr. With Mr. Bentick, and those sort of natural social skills and the education that the rounded education that Mr. Bentick provided. How does that factor into the responsibilities of team captaincy and of selection and sports administration? The objective of all those put in one is to mold young talent. Uh, while, while in my early days, we played a lot of rural cricket, we call it village cricket, both matches all over St. Vincent. A guy would call me on a Friday afternoon and say, Mike, I have a match for you at Greg's Sunday. You can make it. And I would call around and get a team. And we'd go to Greg's and we'd play. Um, all, in those days, Gunny Hines, a young player, O'Neill Bonnaby, you know, all the young Thomas players, Colville Brown, Douglas Haynes, 
there's a young group of players who have come up, they were 19 and 20. So, so we, we get this team together and we go. And the object was to look at the players. Naturally, we, we'd win because we, we, in terms of, of ability, we're way above them. But I always said to the guys, listen, we are going here to teach these cricketers about the game. So we always go with that in mind. You know? And at the, after the game, and, and, and there are times when, even when a guy is batting, I would say to him, um, you, you, you're making the wrong stroke. You're playing wrong. You know, this is what you should be doing. Because development was always in our minds. It's not a question of win at all costs. It's a question of leaving a mark on the development of the game and the person. And the person. And the, the it, 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 um, I tell you, I tell you, clearly. I was, I was, in 1969, when I came back from England, I was asked to head a sports department here in St. Vincent. So I established the sports department and we were walking along and so on. Uh, you're talking about the sports department, one, one person, eh? sports officer. So every year I submitted, <laughs> I submitted proposals to develop the sports in the country. And when they came back, it was so much less than what I had asked for. So one year, I remember I was in the, the sports department was attached to the Department of um, Community Development. And there's a guy, and his lady, Mrs. Pollard, was in charge of the department. Mr. O'Neill Barrow was the permanent secretary in that ministry. When the, in 1970, so I started it in 69, and in 1972, when we submitted the proposals for budgetary consideration, clear when it came back, it was less than a quarter of what we had asked for. So I went to Mr. Barrow, I said, Mr. Barrow, look at this. He said, boy, I see it, you know, I see it. I said, Mr. Barrow, they're wasting my time. They are wasting my time. You can't develop sports without the tools to develop sport. They have no interest in sport. If they had interest, they understand what I'm talking about. I said, Mr. Barrow, may I have your permission to go and see Mr. Jacobs, Cecil Jacobs was the financial secretary in those days. And he said, sure, man, I'll call Mr. Jacobs. So he called Mr. Jacobs and made the appointment. And I went up to Mr. Jacobs and pointed out to him my disappointment at what was approved for the sports department. Mr. Jacobs said to me, Mr. Finley, do you expect to get the same as what is, is approved in Trinidad? I said, Mr. Jacobs, I never ask for what is approved in Trinidad. I ask for what is applicable to St. Vincent. That's what I ask for. But look at what has come back. This is a joke. He says, well, I'm sorry, you can't do anything better. I went back to my office and I wrote my resignation. I could imagine your disappointment. So it, little yes, interest I, I, in sports. And in those days, it seems as if sports and culture suffered. Do you exactly. think it has changed? Not, not, it's changed a little bit. I, I, I would say there is still not sufficient respect for sportsmen and cultural athletes. They need more of that. Uh, just let me give you one example. You know, they have appointed sports ambassadors. I, I'm also one of those. I remember I wasn't named in the first batch or the second batch. And, but, I'm not one for accolades and all that. If you, if you give me something and accept it, but I'm not fighting up. My objective in life is not to, to acquire accolades. It's more to ensure that people are channeling the right direction and so on. So when they finally made me a sports ambassador, I wrote the authorities and thanked them for that and suggested that, you know, it's going to be more meaningful if you have the sports and cultural ambassadors go into the primary and secondary schools and relate to the young people and inspire them and lift them, you know? Um, I never got a reply to that letter and nobody ever got back in touch with me and said to me, well, you know, this is the thing. In the first case, I felt that they should have 
written to each person they were appointed as a sports or cultural ambassador and outline the role he was supposed to play. Just to name some, some sports and cultural ambassadors, it's a showpiece. Well, it's that a was going to be my question. As an ambassador, what is your mandate? I have no mandate. I, 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 heard, I heard the announcement made in one of the independent addresses by the Prime Minister. That, that that's how they're made, that you are, we, have, we have made sports ambassadors or cultural ambassadors and you list who they are. I haven't got a letter telling me that. When I heard the announcement, I wrote to express my appreciation. And I said in my letter, it's going to be more meaningful if we have something to dispute it. You know, let them know what their role is and so on and so forth. But nothing has happened since. You know? Ever the and nurturing soul, Mikey, never wanting talent to go to waste. Exactly. But you see, if I'm doing something, I want to do it properly. If, 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 I, I never forget how important and how those fellas felt, those younger players in the rural areas. I remember, I don't know if you ever, you ever saw the playing field in, in Greg's. It, it is it not is, that I can remember, you, you, no. You know what the school is? But you will recognize it as a playing field if you go there. Uh, the road that goes up to the school, on, on your left hand side, there's a stream, and right there, there's a playing area. That's where we played cricket in those days. At where, where the South River's playing field is now, that used to be a riverbed. And the only place you didn't have stone was where the pitch was, we played on. Oh, yeah. You know? At the Trumaka Bay, there was a playing field. It is alongside the sea. The man at cover had to feel in the sea. You know? So um, it was always a risk. So, well, the, the, luckily, the, the scam. There was a feel like that at, at, at Fitus also. And there was a feel like that at Bookman, it used to be called the Bookman Bay Playing Field. Not many people remember this. That's not where the Bookman Playing Field is now. That was on your right hand side as you're going to the hotel. It, it's just off, off the road. It's just a strip of land by the beach. Same thing. If you if you if you hit the ball, it won't be seen. But those are the feels that thing, and those are those are what I thought. But hold on, why don't what, what are we saying? Sports. What are we telling the sports? And it's very sports complex. They have a nice field at Cumberland. They have one at, at, um, at, 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 at Park Hill and, 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 and at, 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 um, at, at London and so on and so forth. Some of them be damaged by the volcanic eruptions. But they, they, are, they are vastly improved to what they used to be. You know, um, when we were building, when we were building Arnisville, uh, we started that in 1968. And we were hoping to put down a state-of-the-art sports complex with a cricket field, a football, and, and, and track, uh, a little track with football field in the area, and a netball complex. And that Frank Thomas was one of the drivers in, in this thing. And when, and Sir Rupert John, who was the governor general, he was the chairman of the committee in those days. Um, when I happened to have been the secretary of the committee, when we left it to public works, we couldn't afford to get a specialist to, to build the field. So we left it in the hands of public works and they put them the levels and, and the building and so on. When we went back out to check, they had put the field, the cricket field, too high up. We thought they could have put it further down so it had more space to have the football and the track. By the time what they did, by the time we got there, they didn't have enough space to put a foot, proper football field in the track of the top, you know. Uh, so, so, so we lost that. Um, we, we got some improvement when we bid for World Cup matches in 2007. And um, Prime Minister Gonzalez was very frank with us because he's passionate in his cricket. He, he was, when he said to, said to us, I can only spend so and so and so on. We, we went over the budget. But he always explained that to us and so on. But it's because of his passion for cricket why we have that. Because you know what? It was an embarrassment, not only in St. Vincent. I don't know if you recall when we had the Olands who played here. There was a shed over at the Beckway end on the left hand side as you look down from the broadcast booth from the, the, the thing. There's a little shed that people used to be on the day and people on top there. And I feared every match that that, that roof would collapse and kill a lot of people. 
Right? Um, so when we were going to build that field, uh, luckily on, on the committee, we had a, a group of people who were passionate about cricket. And they, they recognized that we, we have to have a state of the art field. Uh, unfortunately, so our problem was never really lack of vision. Somehow we fell down where the execution and funding were concerned. That's right. That's right. Uh, we had Up the vision. Now. We had the vision, but the vision was rested in the in the people who were pushing it. Um, and 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 luckily in, in, in 2007 we had Rav Gonzalez as prime minister. So he had that kind of vision also. Uh, you know, but 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 there were still some people on the on the committee that felt that oh is that a victim to build a plane for you? We had to get a French firm, a contractor French firm, to build the field. And when, when, when they did it, they, they put in a very good drainage system. Before, whenever it rained, you can't pick a advance field. Now, it, it's a sand-based field where a layer of sand, maybe two inches, is put on top of soil. And the, the, the drainage is, is, is on the moon. So it goes through. When it, when it rains, instead of staying on top, it goes right through into the drains and goes off. And they're on the wrong sprinklers and all that, and, 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 and special grass uh, planted. I remember uh, us being commended on different occasions for the quality of our field during games. So not everything was old mass, Mikey. No, no, no I'm, I'm, say, I'm not saying that. I mean, no, we're delighted that we have Anna as well. The only problem now is that we have to go further to compete. Um, when, the, when the Caribbean Premier League had started, uh, a guy called me one day and said, Mike, can you all host some, some CPL matches? I said, we're willing to, but we don't have lights. We needed lights. And you need, you need um, replay screens, electronic scoreboards. Those things are extremely expensive. We can't afford those now. We can't afford those now at all. No, I, I love this cricket to the death. But I know that we cannot afford to put in lights, nor to put in the electronic scoreboard. It's beyond us, especially now that we've had so great and the, and yes. the COVID-19. It's just beyond us. Um, yes. uh, that's one of the reasons we haven't got very ma many matches. That plus the hotel situation, you know, so... so Mikey, yeah, we need to take a break. We need to take a break, but before we go, I need to remind everybody, I'm so caught up with everything that you're saying and this whole big extensive lesson that I'm getting, I'm forgetting to remind people that this is Pure Vinci on Sweet Radio SVG, and I have the honor of speaking with Mikey Finley, one of the most diverse Vincentians ever to walk the face of this island. Ladies and gentlemen, the professor. He is really a fantastic um, entertainer, you know, and he can compete well with people like Sparrow. And, and that's another thing. When, when we have local people who can compete and perform of, on the level of the international Caribbean uh, artist. That's fantastic. Padmo, he was a fantastic Kirksonian. 
And okay, so there's Padmore. There's also this one. Diaspora. This is the reply. The reply. The reply. When Caribbean people go overseas, they pretend they live in their life with ease. They say how we live in this poverty. So they pack and run to New York City. But any time that they have a problem, they send them back here for we to help them. So even though we send for a computer, nothing ain't wrong with that. Tell the place that we send them back, tell them, send this, send that. Send a rose from food, send this, send that. Send some a road root, send this. I can't stand the cold in me body. Send this, send that. Send some strong rum for me. Talk to me about this one, Mikey. I tell you, I tell you. Again, CP is one of these great performers. Uh, he is able to craft his songs to in the local context, and 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 it tells a story. It's a story of our history, of our culture, of the way our people react. You know, and, and 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 that's what's important. He, he had, and and Frankie McIntosh, I think, it, it, most of them, Frankie McIntosh is, is the one who composes him. He is another fantastic talent in Vincentian, who, who holds his own at any level. And incidentally, Frankie and I went to school together. I I, I didn't take any of his musical skills. <laughs> but but but. Mikey, it, come it, on! You can't have it all. <laughs> you have to let somebody else have something. <laughs> Yeah, but these, these entertainers, these Calypsonians, these artists are really fantastic. They, you know, they, they, they tell the story. Um, like Paul Keynes Douglas on, in, in Tanti Mall. What a fantastic story. And, and the way he says it, the way he brings it out, it brings out everything and everybody. You know? but, but unfortunately, our, our, we, we are all not recognized in the way we ought to be recognized. It is true that we are a small community and so on, but still, uh, a lot more needs to be done uh, to recognize these people, uh, for who they are, what they have done, how they have lifted the country, and all that. A lot more needs to be done. Agreed, agreed. Mikey, so far we've spoken about your days in Trumaka and we've spoken about you as a cricketer and as an administrator. Most people know you from cricket. But I understand you also put some gold in the soccer world. Yes, I, I played football. Um, when I started in, the, in, in Trumaka, uh, football was a game of the city of Kingston. Uh, not very many rural areas played football in those days. There were about six or eight teams uh, in the Kingston area that played in the annual football championship. And, um, so, so it was confined to Kingstown. Now it has spread all over the country. And it really is now the game of the people. It, it really is. Um, in every nook and cranny, there's a football match being played to the extent that uh, cricket has taken uh, a, a backseat to football in terms of its rural impact and, its, and, and so on. But um, so I, I, I think I, I got into football because. In the first case, I was introduced to the game on a cadet camp in Barbados when I was in grammar school. Um, we, 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 a regional cadet camp, and we were playing football competition. We had to meet Grenada, and we didn't have a, a team, a, a main squad. We were picking players from who on the cadet camp. And they said, Mikey, you're tall, so you could keep goal. So I went in the goal, and, and Grenada put eight nine and all us, eight or nine nil. All I was doing was taking the ball from the back end and threw it back out to the center to kick off. And when the game was finished, I said, this ain't happening to me again. I either not, I'm not playing football again or <laughs> I'm going to learn to keep, to keep goal. And, 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 and I, I learned to keep goal. I, I, in those days, you, 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 you didn't have much on video to look at. You, you read books. You read books. I still have some of those books in my library here. Um, we only saw clips of a uh, 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 Premier League match on, on cinema when you go just before the movie starts, they show you clips in the British movie reel and so on. Uh, but you have to teach yourself. 
if you read a lot about the game, that, that's how I learned cricket. Too. I read a lot. Of, I read about the way to keep him from a, every person who kept cricket at any level. And the same thing about football and goal keeping. And, um, and so I learned the game. And, and I grew up to become a, a reasonably good footballer. Um, but I gave it up in 68 when, when I made the West Indies team. Because cricket was really my first love. And, uh, who were some of your contemporaries in national cricket? Continued. National football? National football, I beg your pardon. Yeah. Um, people like um, Doug Doyle, Jeff Bailey. Uh, these, are, these are names, to, only the names to you. Those guys have gone there for a long time. Um, Rudy, Rudy Boucher, um, Norbert Hall, Cali Horn, Cali has passed on. Uh, uh, th th those are the guys I played with at the top level. Um, Dr. Adams, Ed Adams, he didn't play, but he was a manager. And um, Scobie Taylor, Sylvester Taylor, he was the president of the Football Federation. And a good president he was. He was, a, he was, a, he was this man, Ed, and, and, and lived football. You know, even when he was retired and he was always wanting to go back, I said, no, Scobie, you stay away from that. You've given your service. You've done a fantastic job. Don't go back there. Don't go back there. But uh, so those are the people I played football with. And um, we, we had a, 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 good, a good team. We played, we played some good football. We didn't have the benefit, as they do now, of tuning into a, a television station and seeing a, a, a European football match, you know, or seeing an English Premier League match. But, but I, I know a number of people who, who played football, uh, played with the same skill. As, 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 as I saw at the international level. Um, we were admirers of Pele and people like Garincha and, and those fellas. Those are the early names in football. But so you know of, about Pele now because he was, the, he was the best footballer in the world, the greatest, like Muhammad Ali in, 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 in boxing or Gary Sobers in, um, in, in cricket or, or Usain Bolt in athletics. Uh, th these were the names that we looked up to, that we wanted to be, that we aspired to be, and, 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 and so it happened. But I wanted to be, uh, I, I became a goalkeeper, and um, I tried to be the best that, that I could do. Um, wasn't, wasn't exposed to the review because we only played among ourselves. Uh, the Winwards, uh, we didn't have Conquer Cup and um, FIFA World Cup. We, we, we were too low to get into those things. So it's really fun. And one of the things too uh, about playing, about me playing football, and that happened to a number of sportsmen. There were divisions of the season. The cricket season was from January to June, which is a dry season. And the, the football season was from June to December. Now, if you played cricket alone and meant for six months of the year, you'd be there doing nothing except maybe training. And, and, and that was a waste of time to a number of us. So that's why a number of us played both football and cricket. When the cricket season was finished, you went into football. So you're kept act active and fit all year round, although there are different muscles you use for the different sports. But basically, you, you keep your fitness. And, and that's how. Mikey, we... you, it is one thing to want to stay active and therefore to make sure that you're occupied year round in one sport or another. But I want to take it beyond going active. How do you become so distinguished that you can actually make the national seed, the national team, sorry, in whichever discipline you are involved in? Uh, I think commitment, commitment and, and love for the sport. Uh, that's the first thing you have to have. You have to love the sport. I, I tell people all the time, you love what you do and you do what you love. And you have very little problem because you don't see it as a task. You see it as a love. If, if, if it becomes a task, as soon as you come against the first hurdle, you'll give it up. But you must love doing it. It must be a love affair between you and what you're involved in. So it, it, that, it became that with, with cricket and football for me. I, I did try track because I had a long jump uh, record in the ground school for a long time. And I'm not sure if it's still there. Uh, and I, I, I used to run the, the, the 200. You sound like King Midas, Mikey. Anything you touch turns to gold. <laughs> So, so, um, <laughs> no, but, but that, that's, that's, that's how we played. We were active. Um, we occupied the grammar school playing field uh, from, from four o'clock to, to when you couldn't see anymore. 
we, we, during the cricket season. During the football season, the same thing would happen at Victoria Park. We would play a match this afternoon, we would finish playing the match, but the team is there, reflecting on the game. Where did we go wrong? Why did we lose this match? Why didn't we score more goals? What happened? That's, that's how you can learn. That's how you do learn. Do you see a difference? Do you see a difference now between the way you and your contemporaries approached your sporting activities to the way our current players approach their sporting activities? Yes, they are, they are very skillful, mind you. They are extremely skillful, these modern day. Let's take football first of all. I've seen a number of skillful players playing football, but as, as I am so in cricket, they are skillful, they are talented. But what I find is that they are not thinking the game. It's, it's all well and good to be skillful and to have a lot of talent. But you have to be able to think and outthink the opposition. Um, in cricket, too often our players have played rash shots and, 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 and been dismissed. When they could have taken their time, you know, apply themselves more and, and so forth. The same thing with football. A rush of blood, bam, and you want to, without looking and seeing how you could make this thing effective and how you could build up an attack and how you could defend it properly. You know, I, I've said to, to a number of, of people um, who wanted to join um, Saints Cricket Club, which is the club we formed at the left arm school, that um, I'd rather play, have on my team um, 10 other players who are committed to playing the sport rather than 10 persons who believe they are stars. The stars sometimes don't have much to add to the game. They come for their own personal reasons to outplay another person without looking deeper and beyond kicking the ball and scoring the goal. You need people who could think. You see somebody with talent, you have to take that person in hand and teach him. And, uh, and, and even Saints Sports Club, which is the club we formed in 1962 after most of us came back from the school tournament in Grenada in 1960. Um, that, that still existed. We, we had big plans. We had, we had a club room. We had a table tennis board in the club room. We, we wanted to educate the members. A number of our members were persons who never went to, to secondary school, who probably didn't have a, a good um, primary school education and we wanted to educate them, you know. Uh, so so, so we, we, we thought of, of this club room, we could get people to come in, to talk to our members and to bring them up, bring up lift, lift up their lives, lift them up. Um, but what, what killed us is that a number of our leading members, as, as, as normally happened, went overseas. They went either to Canada or to England or to the United States. And although the few of us who remained here continued, then we didn't have the manpower to do what we wanted to do. We still play cricket and we still have a lot of young players who are, who are involved. Um, at the start of the season, hasn't started yet, but just before the season was due to start, um, we had a meeting and they invited me to come out and talk to the, the, the members. And I, I, I tried to impart in them what exactly is required of the game and how it changed from when they played and, and, and how they could use it to improve their own standard of living. Because now, millions of dollars uh, in sports, exactly. <laughs> so, if I were to summarize what you were saying, your ideal sportsman would be a combination of brain, because he needs to be able to strategize and analyze, of brawn, because he needs the physical strength to be able to defend and support his team, but also an element of humility, because you need to understand that you don't know it all and that you have to leave room for instructions from those who know a little more than you do. And also, and also, but uh, you are a human being. Uh, you're not perfect. You could strive to be perfect, and that's a good thing. But understand that you're not perfect in this world. Um, and, and, and that uh, you don't forget the people who help you along the way. In other words, you don't become too arrogant in your achievement of fame and, and, and honor, because that's all most of what we achieve down here. We don't achieve wealth and, and, and riches. Uh, so so, so there are a number of people who, you know, you only see this. I remember 
in, in, 16, in 69 it was, 76. In 76 in England, when the West Indies swarmed England in the cricket series. And uh, it was coming to the end of the tour. We were playing uh, our last game. I think it was at Derbyshire. I can't remember which country. But towards the end of the tour, you're tired because you're on the go all the time. You finish a game in one country today and you travel 400 miles the same day, finish that game to play the next day. So it is really tight going. And, and if you're not fit, you could break down and so on and so forth. So when it coming to the end of, of, the, of the tour, if you could see and you could feel you, just, you want to get home, you know, you, you want to relax and so on. Because it's, it's, it's a routine every day. You have to get up at a certain time, you have to go to breakfast, you have to train, you have to have dinner and so on and so on. And so, so we were playing this, this last tour game and naturally there's some players who will get into the shower early, change and come and, and be ready to leave. And there are some fellows who will you know, daily dally and take a long time to shower and, and so on and so forth. So those of us who are ready were in the, in the, in the coach, in the, in the coach, waiting for the others to come. And this West Indian lady, she had to be West Indian because she was black. And she stepped onto the bus, the, the door of the bus. And she looked at us and she said, hey guys, why that long face? You fellas don't know, understand what it means to us when you come up here to England and you beat the Englishmen as you're doing now. <laughs> gave us the history of that. And that was fantastic because we thought she was just coming on to ask for autographs. You know? But, and, and, and the thing, the thing with tours of, of, it doesn't happen so much in the West Indies, but overseas, hundreds of young people will come and ask you for autographs, you know. In, in the Caribbean, we pass each other every day. What do you want my autograph for? You know what I mean? You see me every yes, day, yes. we talk and so on and so forth. But autographs so mean a lot to those people. It means so much to them. Uh, I remember in 68 in Australia, we were playing at Melbourne. And Melbourne is the, is the, is the one that hosted the Olympics um, a few years back. And I saw these, these young boys at the side and they wanted autographs. They were trying to get, Kanai was sitting somewhere down there. And they were trying to get his attention, but Kanai wasn't bothering with them. So I went across and, and I said to them, give me an autograph book, I'll get them to you. Because I knew how I would feel if I want an autograph and somebody would get it for me. So I, I come from a small environment. You know, I wasn't a big star. So, so I got it for them. And um, they came every day of that match and we became very close friends. They brought their family and they, they, they discovered that they loved cashew nuts. And every time they came to the ground, wow. they brought a big bottle of cashew nuts to me. In fact, um, at Christmas, we spent Christmas in Australia and we were allowed to spend the day with the family and I spent the day with them. And it was so fantastic. They enjoyed that. I enjoyed it. Um, I, I, I had their, their, their address up to recently until um, Hurricane Thomas blew off the, the roof of, of my, my study and I've done a lot of my stuff, so I lost a lot of my stuff. And I don't know how to get in touch with them. But, um, but, but it is that kind of, of, of relationship that you develop with people, and especially with young people, because you know how they feel. They're coming to see the stars. I felt that way towards a boy. You know, yes. that I, yes. I, would, I, I would want to mix with the stars, and then it happened. I was mixing with Sagari Sobers, I was mixing with Wes Hall, you know what I mean? And so, yeah, so you beyond your to, wildest dreams, yes. And you have to enter into the feelings of these young people who are, and, and if, if there's any way to help to, 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 to mold somebody into a, into a decent human being, I do it. But it it's You've done to, more than you know, believe it. That can't be on this world. Let's digress a bit, Mikey. Um, you just referred to Christmas, and one of the songs that you chose was Christmas in St. Vincent, really sweet. I don't know if you know this version. I know this is not what you requested. Are you familiar with this version? Yes. Darren Andrews. What is sweet about Christmas for you, Mikey? 
Christmas is all about the things that you enjoy. As a kid, you get to play, you eat plenty. The only thing I don't like about Christmas, <laughs> the only thing I don't really like about Christmas is the drinking. Um, you know, times when you move from home to home, that doesn't happen much again. And, and that, that brought out the family in all of us. That, that we move from my home to your home to somebody else's home. We start at one and we make the rounds until we're finished. And it, was, it is like all one family. And then there, I love the Christmas carols. I love the atmosphere of Christmas. You know, it is fantastic. And now, now we, we, we are we have reached a stage where we are not looking at white Christmas anymore, like the Ben Crosby's. We have our own Calypsonians. We have our own songwriters who are writing songs on Christmas as it is in the Caribbean, as it is in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. That is fantastic. That is great. And I'm glad that I have lived through all this. I'm glad that I've lived through all this. I'm lucky. I'm lucky. I'm, I'm, I'm on top of the hill and I'm going down the other side. But, you know, on the way, on the way, it has been fantastic. It has really been fantastic. That's amazing, Mikey. So we have quite a bit more to talk about, but I see our time is slipping away from us. Let's enjoy a little bit more of this. I think Christmas is sweet too, huh? And I think they did a fantastic job on this cover. I, I, I believe Siki ought to be really proud of this. We've come a long way with all this calypso, all the designs on the on the covers of the, 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 the albums. Oh, we've come a fantastic, we've come a long, long, long way. Um, I remember the days of the boom drum, and we still had a little bit of that. You know, the, 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 those guys used to play the, the steel pan uh, on, their, on their orange cup things and so on. And I, I don't know how many, most of them have probably died out. Um, the, 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 the string band, you know, all those are fantastic. Those come back. And the person. bamboo melodians, yes. That's right, that's right. Those are, those are yeah. interesting. All those are fantastic. Right? And the great pity is that we did not have the equipment to capture all those things on film or on video. You know, we have some, but of the latter ages. But the early. earlier practitioners are lost to those of us who never saw them. Yes. That is true. That is true. Yeah. That is true. So, Mikey, you, you are a historian, not that it is one of the things that shows up in your bio, but you certainly are a historian, if only by virtue of the amount of time that you've been here on this earth. But you're also a journalist and you've been a commentator. How did you get involved in that? It seems these days to be a natural progression for, for the athletes, but I don't think it was quite like that in your time, is it? No, uh, what, what happened while I was secretary of the various associations, uh, in those days we had one radio station, the, the government radio station, and we had one newspaper, the Vincentian. So they didn't have any special writers, nobody wrote on sports. So to get your releases out about what the associations were doing, um, how, how the matches were going, you had to write the releases yourself. And that's how it started. And I, I realized, hey, I like what I'm doing. I like this thing. I like to put things together and to, to, to publish them and so people could know what is happening and, and so on and so forth. Um, and, and then Radio Antilles was around in those days. So I began reporting for Radio Antilles. I reported for, for Voice of Barbados. Um, I wrote for uh, Reuters, it was first, before it became Kana, and AP, Voice of America, and you know, whoever wanted a story, because I was freelancing, I would send them a story. I remember doing a piece when Soufri erupted in 1971, I think it was, um, for the Canadian Star. Um, the Toronto Star, it was in those days. Um, and um, they, they published it, they published it on the front page, and I felt very proud that I was able to, 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 to get an article published on the, on, the, on the front page of the Toronto Star. That was a reputable um, publication. Uh, then, I don't know how it is now, um, but Radio Antilles was, was my main source. Radio Antilles was the voice of the Caribbean. Um, it was a monster. 
and, and, and have a lot of friends who used to work with the and, and you know, anything happens, they will call me and say, well, we understand so and so, or, or, or even because when I became a full-time journalist, um, I knew I had to report for it, and I, I just did it. When a big story broke, I called and I said, look, I have a story. Or they, 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 they would have their, their major news class at, at about six o'clock. So I'd have a story or two waiting for them at that time. And, and, and so I, I developed my skills as a writer, and um, there was more demand for it. But the only problem is they didn't do it too much. Sorry, Mikey, you said the problem was? The only problem was that it wasn't a well-paid job. <laughs> I don't no, know. Sorry. You seem to get involved in all of these very important say, activities that weren't really very lucrative. No, because because money is not my aim in life. Um, or you need money to survive, but you can't make it be your master. Um, you know, so so you, you you just have to go, you go along. I mean, now there's a lot of money in, in cricket. Um, but that's how it is. I mean, it, mean, it doesn't mean that you enjoy the cricket. The only regret I have in terms of the cricket was that it took you away from your family. I'm, I'm basically a family man. And um, it took you away from your family for a very long time. Um, when, when, when I first played, um, my, 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 my first marriage and my first set of children, um, I, I was more away than I was at home. And, and, and that hurt me because I love my children, I love my family, and it, it hurt me that we couldn't take them with me. We couldn't afford that. We couldn't afford that. If I could afford it, we were taking them. Um, uh, now, and Sarah is lucky because in 2007, she went to England, she and Jean went to England with me, and she enjoyed it. She was a little, it's kunst then, but she enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> she, um, she, in fact, she, 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 uh, she used to argue with the Englishmen about, about cricket when I was standing his batting, telling them, you all can't play. You see that? Look at that. <laughs> so so, so th that's one of the setbacks of being an international sportsman or sportswoman, in that um, it's a sacrifice you have to make. And sooner or later, you have to decide between your family and the sport. I mean, age will, will tell you when you have to leave. But there are some people who leave early because they're just can't take it anymore. They want to be with their family. The family needs them. I have a friend of mine who, um, every time he sees me, almost every time, he says to me, man, you don't come to support saints anymore. Um, what, what's happening? We don't see you at cricket. I said, listen, I'm 77 years old. And for more than half of my entire life, I've lived on the football field or the cricket field. During the week, the afternoons, Saturday all day, Sunday all day. Now, my focus is a little different. My focus is with my family. I, I, I regret that. And uh, my, my first set of children uh, didn't hold that against me. And I'm delighted for that. Um, as far as they're concerned, daddy was daddy. Um, daddy was not the, the big cricketer or footballer that he was. He was just daddy to us. Uh, and that's what they like. That's what they, uh, they don't have any airs about them, about being children of, of, of a person who, who has played a lot and played at the international level. They regard me as, as their daddy, as their human being. Uh, it fact, would be strange being the offspring of Thaddeus Michael Finley, the Pope, the humble one, for them to turn around and have airs and graces about their daddy being a, a superstar. Especially to us in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Superstar yeah. though you may be, your children, I am sure, just took a leaf out of your book and just walked in the path along which you had guided them. Well, they are wonderful children. They are wonderful children. Um, they, they, we grew up together. Uh, and um, I was a single parent for for. for for most of the years with those first of the children. And they never disrespected me. In fact, you know, Cleo, if they wanted a book in school, the first thing they would ask me, Daddy, do you have money? And I would say to them, what do you want? They say, we want so and so and so. But if you don't have money, you can wait. They never oh. demanded anything. They never demanded anything of me. 
Um, in school, Michelle and Maxine, when their games teacher said to them, look, look at you all, your father played everything and you all not doing anything. They would say, daddy is daddy, and we are we, which was the correct answer. It doesn't mean that because there was a sports person that they must become involved in sports. Nikki was the only one, the boy, who showed some signs. He's a good athlete. And one year he made the school's team to, to, to run in the national championships. And I said to him, do you wish a pair of spikes, Nikki? He said, no, that we don't wish it. This is not my thing. I just, I just went for so. <laughs> you know? okay. It's good that they never felt the pressure to try to rise to your standards because it could have turned out pretty badly. We've seen so many of those stories all go wrong. So yeah. as, a fa as again, I said, everything you touch turns to gold, whether it's your family, whether it's your sporting prowess, whether it's your administrative capabilities, everything you touch just turns to gold, Mikey. Very much clear, I'm not sure with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, Very the evidence is there. I want to, I know you chose this one, but let's dedicate this one to you, Mikey. I just fuss, I just fuss, I just get real mad, don't start denying. Cause I ain't lying It's unfair Oh me dear Lord it make me sad The way they treating some people As if they mad In order to be honored Here in this country You got to be a big boy Or a P.I.P. You see small folks like you and I We gonna walk here until we die Yet still them ungrateful scam Won't even say thanks well, wait, 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 Mikey, wait, 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 before we go any further, on behalf of Stephen and myself, and I dare say on behalf of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, on behalf of the Windward Islands, the Leeward Islands, the West Indies, on behalf of the world, those people who you touched in Australia, those people who you touched in India, thanks, 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 thanks. See you. The most likes. Oh, you made it easy. Uh, we're not finished yet. There are some youths, that's the truth. They just try real hard, but no encouragement to make no improvement. But when you're old and the bell toll, and you're in the graveyard, that's the time they will rush to honor you like they are. In order to be honored, you must be 60. Your back got to be bent and your knees shaky And you're stumbling all on the tongue With your medals pulling you down But if you want the nation to smile just honor a child If a child became a land scholar Before he would walk for a dollar Well, Mikey, the, he said that you, you have to be stumbling around And your back has to be bent before you can get your honor Fortunately for us in St. Vincent, that wasn't quite the case with Mikey Finley. Apart from your sports ambassadorship, you also had the pavilion named after you at the Annosvale playing field. And for me, that was very significant and touching, knowing that you were involved with them from way back in 1968 in the concept and in just this whole vision to have a sporting facility, a proper sporting facility for Vincentians and a sporting facility that could facilitate international activity. To then turn around and have a pavilion named after you, not just for that particular vision, but also for all that you had done for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And I know you said you're not doing it for the honor, but when you put all of those things together, of the honors that you've received, what do you think means the most to you? Which do you hold dearest? You always put me on the spot, you know, for you. It, it is difficult to say which is dearest. I mean, the because I've been involved in the Annisville Sports Complex since 1968 up to 2007, uh, that, that, that's, that's a great honor. Uh, uh, I, I think that would be 
probably the more significant uh, honor. Uh, a number of clubs uh, in, in, in here in St. Vincent, there's the Masters, Brick Wim Masters football that, that have given me an award, SVG Association of Toronto, Hyrule Club of New York, SVG Club of St. Croix, US Virgin Islands, NBC, SVG Ex Teachers Association of New York, uh, the local Rotary Club was awarded the NBE in 1985 and uh, given a diplomatic passport in 2002. Uh, so, and, 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 and I've got a number of awards from football and cricket associations. Uh, so, so, all those put together um, showed me that I was appreciated for what I did, for the contribution I made. Um, the, 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 I, th I think what Toyla was trying to say is that all that is well and good, but sometimes you have to go beyond that. Sometimes you have to be more meaningful. I remember um, Tyrone Tweety Spence, he was a national footballer, good footballer, but, and he got injured on the job at the post office. So he had a, a, a lot of challenges and he found it difficult to live. And I've always appealed in, in a number of ways for some fund that will help people in, in that situation. And I was delighted when Prime Minister Gonzalez said, that I think to last independence address that they were going to do something about that. I don't know if they've done anything yet, but shortly after that, the, um, the COVID came along and so first started erupting. So all those things have to be probably on the back burner. But let's take, let's take Winston Soso. That man had done so much for the Calypso art form. And, uh, and, and unfortunately, he had, he had kidney problems and he struggled. He struggled in the end. Now, that's not nice. That's not nice. Pretty Spence, you know. A number of people, and not only in sports, but in all areas, they're struggling in their, in their, in their latter years. And, and that is not fair. It, 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 I, I, I agree with Beckett that the country owes you nothing, really. Um, you don't want to get a mansion from your country, but at least what you do, we are not like the, the, the football stars, cricket stars, baseball stars, the American football stars, the boxing stars, that will make Please, millions of dollars so we have enough to tie off. We don't make anything. We don't make anything. And uh, we, need, we need someone to ensure that when we are aging, that we are kept there, kept comfortable in the world. That, that, that's a sad story with me, for sure. Agreed, indeed. Uh, there's one more thing that I'd like to share with you, Mikey. We are running out of time, but there's one more thing that I want to share with you um, from us here at Sweet Radio SVG. Ethan Lee is a very dear friend of mine. Uh, our friendship goes back to when Mikey, as an adult male resident in King Garden, uh, was, I wouldn't say my neighbor, not next door neighbor, but he lived in the community where I lived. And as a young boy, cricket was the sport that all of us played. And Mikey was like the god of cricket in terms of his reputation, in terms of what he, he was known for. He was known to be, at the time, one of the best wicket keepers, if not the best wicket keeper in the world. So imagine, a young boy living in a community with the best wicket keeper in the world and so we were playing cricket in the area and decided that we wanted to make a cricket pitch and the cricket pitch where the site we chose to have this cricket pitch was just outside Mikey's house and it was like a joy from heaven when we realized that Mikey came out on different occasions while we were playing cricket not only helped us by coaching, but also gave us a lot of his mittens and gloves and pads and stuff that we never dreamt we could actually 
touch but to think that we were actually playing in the gloves and the we could keep a mittens and backspans mittens and pads that Mikey Finley used actually used well we played with them and we played near his home for years and I grew up to become a lawyer and Mikey was playing for the lawyers cricket team at the time when they drafted me on the team primarily to be a, a gopher somebody who could just run and feel the ball and we played cricket Mikey was the wicket keeper and when they realized that the youth person the person who was um, full of youth had more reflexes than most other people they said okay you know what you could feel in the slips so there I was feeling in the slips next to none other than Michael Thaddeus Finley and we became friends ever since and I remember one incident when we were arrayed from wicket keeper first second slip a ball passed through the two of us um, really really quickly I decided well it passed through first and second slip so I was going to go for it and Mikey said to me after of course I had missed it Mikey said to me what the hell is wrong with you you're trying to show me up I, I mean I didn't even go for it and you trying to go for a ball like that and that to me was like the best thing that anybody could ever tell me it was the biggest compliment that Michael Finley didn't decide to go for a catch and I decided to go for it <laughs> Mikey and I became friends from that time until now and I was very honored to be the person who chaired the handing over ceremony or the renaming ceremony of the pavilion at the Annesville Sporting Complex where a, a pavilion was named in his honor the Mikey Finley stand I think there is only one more anecdote that I I wish to add to to all of this and it is that we played as I said for the lawyers cricket team and after one particular match where I I batted all the way down at number eight because the, the rest of the the team had to bat before the youngster and Mikey after the game came to me and said Stephen um, you would like to play for Saints nothing could have been a greater honor in my mind and I wish Mikey all the best I think he is the standout sportsman in St Vincent I think he deserves every accolade that he he gets he has been so much to so many people. He has represented St. Vincent and the West Indies well. And um, I am immensely proud to be associated with him in any way and to be his friend. Mikey, do you know him? <laughs> Stephen, thank you very, very much. Very, very much. Um, I did tell you earlier that um, Stephen and I go along with the back and, and so forth. Um, but um, what, what happened then on the cricket field was, you know, just, just I, never, I never realized it meant so much to Stephen because you know, that, 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 that's how the game is. That, that, that's how we play. But, but we enjoy those games. Those, I know Steve remembers one, <clears throat> one year we were playing at Bacchus's ground. But that's where the next um, administrative building is now. But, um, where is it? Um, King, King Hall. And Arthur Williams was batting for the lawyers. So we were playing radio and press against the lawyers. And Arthur snicked the ball and they caught him and appealed. And the umpire sent him out. And Arthur was adamant he didn't hit the ball. So, so, so he's there arguing with the umpire. So I said to him, I said, Arthur, listen, I have kept wicket to some of the greatest batsmen in the world. I never thought of cheating them out. Why should Here I come Here comes the Pope. Now? Here comes the Pope. <laughs> Why should I come now and cheat you out? I said, uh, umpire, let him back. Let him continue batting. And he continued batting. I think he got out the next ball. Bold. But um, we, we, <laughs> are, 
when we were children playing games and things like that happened, we used to say, God, let's see. Yeah, precisely, God, let's see. <laughs> but, but we enjoyed those days. We, we really enjoyed those, um, those cricket matches. It's a great pity now that, um, well, we have grown older. We don't have time for that anymore. And the young people uh, don't seem to have the same appreciation of life as we did. We played not to win a trophy, not to win the senior trophy, but for the camaraderie that it brought to all of us. Um, Stephen spoke quite, quite well of, of, of his involvement and how we enjoyed that. And a, a number of, of, of people enjoyed it that way. Um, I remember playing with Kenneth John, uh, I remember Pierre Campbell. You know, Stephen Pierre played for Saints one year. We were in the B division and <clears throat> We needed to win the last game we played to get promoted to the A division, first division. And Pierre and I, Pierre and I were batting, and Pierre batted beautifully. I think he made 50 odd that day at Calico. I made 100. And so we won the match. So at the end of the game, I said, well, Pierre, prepare because next day we play in first division. Pierre said to me, first division? No, sir. This is my level. I'm not going for the <laughs> Everybody has to stay in the lane. <laughs> yes, it's a no, no. This is this is my maximum. I'm not going for the day. But but we you know, you know, cricket isn't always about winning or losing. It's about the environment you play in, the atmosphere, uh, the conversations you have, you know, the the now the reflection you can make on a game or a series or, a, a, or an event. Uh, that's what it's about. Uh, the, 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 that, that game, it didn't matter who won or lost. The fact is that uh, 24, 25 people got together on a given day and played a match of cricket and enjoyed every element of it. Uh, at the end of the day, you didn't hear any argument about, oh, he wasn't out, or oh, he was out, or oh, he, no, no, no. We just enjoyed it. We, we chatted about different things during the game. And at the end of the game, we went home and we were just as good as before we started. That, that, that's one of the beauty of, of, of sport, that it brings out the best in you, in a human being. Cricket is really a social game. You have, you have tea and you have lunch and you have after match drinks. It's really a social game. The cricket is secondary to the number of people. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, you know, and, and, and Gary Sobers has enjoyed every bit of that. He's enjoyed the drink. He's enjoyed the cricket. Clear, <laughs> <laughs> clear. I didn't tell you the story, but you know, when, when I played, when I went on the West Indies team in '68, um, I have never seen a Test match live, and we played our first uh, state game in Western Australia against Western Australia. And Gary Sobers, he was the captain of the West Indies team, of course, and he was batting. So I'm sitting down in the pavilion. I didn't play that game, Jackie Hendricks played. I'm sitting down to look at the game, to see what I can learn. And Gary Sobers is batting. Tony Locke, the English left arm leg spinner, is bowling to Gary Sobers. And Sobers drives him through the covers. Four runs, not a man move. You understand that language? Not a man move means that, yes, you understand that language. I see you can't stop that. Yes, yes. So Tony Locke took some wonder feelers from Gary's leg side and put him exactly where the ball passed for that four. He stopped the gap, or he's supposed to stop the gap. So he comes up the ball again to Gary Silver. And Gary Silver drives Tony Locke in between these two fellas with precision. And I said to myself, that man could bat. It's the first time I've seen Gary Silver. Tony Cozier later wrote, in his, in his description of the match, in his report on the match, that I had been seeing Gary Sowers the first time, and my mouth was open all the time watching him. And they had to be trying to close my mouth because there are a lot of ice in, in Western Australia from the horse track. You know? he, 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 he is to cricket what, what Pele is to football, what um, Ali is to boxing, what now both is to track and field. 
and what 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 those basketball top stars are to basketball. He is the best in his field. He was not only a batsman; he was a bowler in in, in three forms. He could bowl orthodox left. He could bowl fast. You know, left arm fast. He could. He was a fantastic fielder. His, his reflexes were great at, at leg slip or in slip, and um, and and he was just fantastic. You know, I, I I was looking at a clip of a match we played at Lords. The first match I played in the first test match, and I, I was keeping and Gary so much of a slip, and I said, "But look at that! Eh? I never dreamt one day I'd be playing with the great cigar from Sobel, but there he is. He's a slip and I'm keeping. You know, those are those are some of the memories that will live with you for all yeah. of your all your Mikey, life. as you are in awe of Sir Garfield. So am I, and I am sure several other Vincentians in awe of you. And I want to thank you ever so much for giving me this honor. I, I, it's going to be something that stays with me forever. I mean, yes, we meet on the street and you give me your jokes and so on. You heckle me from time to time, but <laughs> nothing, no interaction that you and I have had will compare to this moment. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all that you've done for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And thank you for being the role model that you have been, not just for men, but for women as well. And for people aspiring to be professionals and not just, just run of the mill professionals, but respected professionals. Thank you so much for that. Before we go, Mikey, tell us what in your opinion is pure Vinci. I'll tell you something. Years ago, uh, a friend of mine said, Mike, um, <clears throat> I want to arrange for you to move to Barbados where you could enhance your cricket. I said, me move to Barbados? I see, see me here? I'm <laughs> a Vinci to the bone. <laughs> you know, <laughs> my, my mother, and she's passed away now, wanted me to live in the States. She said, okay, you don't have to live with us. You don't have to live in the States. Just let me file for you so you could come up and tell me one. I said, mommy, when I want to come to the States to visit you, I will come. I am a VC and I'm remaining here. I was born here. I can get here. They can bury me here. <laughs> VC, there, there's so many things in Ascension that I love. You know what I mean? Just, just, just the way of life, just the way of life. Um, sometimes I am dismayed, amazed and dismayed that we, especially in this COVID situation, that we are not prepared to examine as closely as we should the implications of the COVID and that we're not taking the required action to prevent its spread. I'm concerned about that. I'm concerned that people are too easily swayed by what they see on social media without thinking, without giving it their own down-to-earth thought and being frank about it and, and, and getting a proper opinion. If you don't understand something, ask somebody who you think should know and let them guide you. I, I, and that's one of the other things that I, I, I hope I have been able to do is to guide people, the younger people especially, on, on life, on life, not just in cricket or football or athletics, but on life, because that's what, that's what we live life, you know, um, life is for living and, and we live it and, you know, whatever, you never stop learning, you can never stop learning. From the time you're born until you die, even after you die, people benefit from your death because when they do an autopsy, they will know what you died from and do something to prevent somebody else from dying of that same uh, disease. But life is fantastic. Life is fantastic. And, um, you know, when Ansala was much smaller, um, she used to come and cuddle up with me to go to sleep. You know, now she's big. I miss that because she's bigger now. She's a big girl. She's a big woman now. And, and although I get my hugs and kisses and so on, but still, it is, it is not the same thing like cutting up with you when she's ready to sleep. You know what I mean? That is something yeah. that I love. 
happen. Uh, but all that, all that is part of living, um, relating to your family and, 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 and you know, family is family. Uh, so Mikey, thank you so much. We wish you all the best and do continue to take good care of yourself. Or is it Jean taking such good care of you? <laughs> yes, yes. I, I have to give Jean and Sally credit. Uh, I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't, but I had some, what did I do? Something I had, oh, I had, I had, um, I went to the doctor because I had a hernia. And the doctor said, well, you have to take it easy for a couple of days. Well, I said, sure, doc, I'm not going to do anything. I know, mow the lawn and so on, but I know I have to take it easy for so on, so okay. So I, I, I am home now, and I, I wasn't overnight in the hospital or anything, you know. I, right at the surgery, once I had recovered, I came home. Jean and Ansala figured I should lie down in bed and not get up. <laughs> I said, but, but what? When, when I get up to go outside in the living room, where are you going? I mean, the pampering, <laughs> I enjoy the pampering, but come on, that's not, <laughs> you know. Uh, but but they, they really take good care of me. I, I have to that is it. love and honor. <laughs> Mikey, thanks so much. Okay, darling, you're quite welcome. Mm -hmm. yeah. you're, you're most welcome, darling. You take care. You're I will, person. and you too. <laughs> This has been Pure Vinci on Sweet Radio SVG and this evening I had the distinct honor of speaking to the consummate Vincentian, Pure Vinci, Vinci to the bone, Thaddeus Michael Finley, National Treasure of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Join us again next week for another edition of Pure Vinci on Sweet Radio SVG. Chance, come join with me. Let's take you to Mike Finley. SVG, come jump with me and be with you to Mike Finley. I am sure you all remember the achievements made by this cricketer. Now come, let's join as one and pay tribute to the man who let us pay tribute to a great Vincent Shaw. The greatest keeper to pass through the region. He made small island cricket start climbing the ladder. But playing injustices and pressure. A footballer, basketballer, this great wicket keeper, a sprinter, a long jumper, a superstar goalkeeper. I say we should crown this man. SVG is great, this sportsman. Every VC man. And woman, time to come together as one and salute a true champion. I want you politicians to know when you're talking about national hero. No way till Mikey dead to put no crumb on his head. Who let us pay tribute to this great Vincent Shaw? The greatest keeper to pass through the region. He took the combined islands to the top of the ladder. He led the Tanti Ball encounter. Against England in St. Lucia Finley proved that great keeper So they dropped more in the world record holder To we'll take this man to Australia For that alone we should crown the man Yes, which is great, this sportsman Play New Zealand in Pimsha No camera, no third umpire The cat seems spectacular the umpire sent Glenn Turner But Finley told his keeper so Gary He did not take the catch cleanly Everyone thought it was a joke They call him the code Who let us pay tribute to a true sportsman One of the fairest out of the Caribbean An athlete of integrity Win or lose, he played honestly He's so cool, he's so humble A great role model a perfect example for all sports people I am going to crown this man as the greatest sportsman WICB cook up the conspiracy To bring back Derrick Murray They victimize Mike Finley 
But Finley ignored all this and continued to play his cricket. We all know he was the best, the more he played all the tests. Who oh, let us pay tribute to a great Vincent Shaw? I the greatest keeper to pass through the region. I he opened the door for the small island cricketer. While back playing prejudicial court, yeah. Sell that cricket and soccer. This why as a cricketer, a very strong leader, a great team player. I am going to crown this man the Caribbean's greatest sportsman. All round sportsman, the best to pass through the Caribbean. No other one I know. Played so many games at such a high level. I like the way he used to dive down the leg side, and I like the way he used to dive on the off side. Thank you, Mikey, Mikey for being a good role model for me. Mikey.